Will everyone please be seated? Good afternoon and welcome to Hofstra University's Soccer as a Beautiful Game Conference and to the convocation honoring Pele. I'm Herman Berliner, Hofstra's Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, and it's my pleasure to serve as Master of Ceremonies this afternoon and to welcome everyone, especially our students, as well as the participating high schools. And let me give you the names of the high schools that are participating this afternoon. We're glad you're here. Garden City Park, Hempstead High School, Holy Cross High School, John Adams High School, Lawrence Middle School, New York Red Bulls Academy, North Shore High School, Progress High School, St. Anthony, Sawanica High School, Shaw Avenue Elementary School, Southside High School, Syosset High School, the Wheatley School, and Uniondale High School. We're glad that you're here. If I can ask everyone, no flash photography, no cell phones, please, and let me introduce the one person on our campus who doesn't need an introduction, the president of Hofstra University, President Stuart Rabinowitz. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first, I want to thank you all for the rousing hand you gave me when I walked out on the stage. I don't think I've ever gotten a round of applause like that before, but, but it's, uh, having a legend at your university is something special. So it's, it's my pleasure to welcome you as well to Hofstra University, to extra time at Hofstra University. Uh, it's exciting, as the provost pointed out, that so many young people are here, some of the best college students in America, Hofstra students are here, and some of the best high school students in America, Long Island High School students are here. So welcome to you all. We are here to celebrate the life and the contributions of a truly legendary individual, a legendary soccer player, Pelé. We celebrate him as an athlete and, and some of you may not know this, as a humanitarian. And we are here to confer upon him probably the highest honor that a university can bestow upon somebody, and that is an honorary degree. We are honoring Pelé today as part of an international conference on the historical and the political and the social and the economic impact of the game of soccer. And as the enthusiasm and the side, size of this audience demonstrates so well, that impact, impact continues to be quite profound. We know that sports has the power to inspire and to fascinate people, and perhaps none more than the game of soccer. It is the world's most popular game. It has an estimated 250 million players and more than 1.3 billion fans. And the same could be said about Pele, whose grace and athleticism transcended all boundaries, all boundaries, all differences of geography, of ethnicity, of race, and, a, and of politics. When the king of football took the soccer field, divisions of all kinds fell away. And when we watched in amazement as he did his bicycle kick or his scissor kick, all those differences mattered not at all. Long before the internet made worldwide fame and celebrity as fleeting as a, you know, the latest viral video, Pele was a global icon. And burnished by his philanthropic work and service, Pele's stature has not only endured but increased, even though he left the field of play more than 30 years ago. Maybe he still has some college eligibility left. I ha have to find that. As the artist Andy Warhol once said, specifically about Pele, Pele was one of the very few who, who contradicted his theory. Instead of 15 minutes of fame, Pele will have 15 centuries of fame. And so we have scholars and we have journalists and players and coaches and fans such as you from around the world with us today, brought together by their love of soccer 
and their belief that sport can reveal important lessons about the world and about ourselves. And today we are united as fans and students of, quote, the beautiful game, unquote, a bond forged by sport and hopefully fortified by education that will hopefully lead to greater understanding. Thank you. I'm pleased to now introduce our two conference co-directors, Dr. Brenda Elsie, Associate Professor of History, and Dr. Stanislav Puglesi, Professor of History and the Queensborough Unico Distinguished Professor. Hi, good afternoon. I'd like to start by recognizing the Consulate of Brazil, who is here today, the, the representatives Bruno Zetalo and Federico Bindi for their ongoing support for the conference. And I'd also like to call up two Brazilian students, beginning with Sarah Campolina, class of 2014. Good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I'm very honored to be here this afternoon. I want to thank Dr. Stanislaw Pugliesi and Dr. Brenda Elsie for the opportunity to be here. Also, I want to thank the president, Stuart Rubinos, Rubinos? Oh, oops. Okay. <laughs> for, for hosting this conference. Thanks to the Hofstra men's head soccer coach, Richard, Richard Nutal, for reaching out to me. E obrigado, Pelé, por ter aceito o convite. For the last but not least, thanks for the volleyball team and friends for the support throughout those years, and especially for this moment. Today, I'm aware that I'm fulfilling the dream of 10 out of 10 Brazilians, which is to be able to meet not only the soccer, not only the sport, sport language, but also a king of soccer. Three and a half years ago, I came to the United States to play volleyball and to study. And since then, always the people ask me three questions. The first of them is where I'm from, which whoever didn't figure out yet, I'm from Brazil. And eventually, it leads to the second question, which is if I know how to dance samba. <laughs> or people would randomly start singing a song that became worldwide famous, I Sou Te Pego, from Michel Teló, which Pelé will be singing for us tonight. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> um, I, maybe. <laughs> Finally, the third question, if I know Pelé. In fact, one time, I decided to joke about and I told the guy, yeah, I know him. He is my godfather. <laughs> and uh, the guy believed. And he went crazy. So I don't joke about it anymore. People take really serious. I start to realize. So after today, I would finally be able to answer this question without having to lie. Not because he's going to become my godfather, but because I'm going to finally met him. <laughs> If, if you want to adopt me. <laughs> Pelé made all Brazilians proud. He conquered three World Cups. Right now we have six. I'm already counting for the one that's gonna, we're going to conquer this year. So he conquered three World Cups of the six. <laughs> Brazil. <laughs> and he received the king's crown of soccer and he put Brazil in the spotlight. Unfortunately, I wasn't born on time to, to, see, him to, perform, to see him perform me. However, my dad taught me a lot about Pelé. My dad said that watching Pelé was a feeling that brought all the Brazilians together. As my dad say, he made all, all he made all of us believe and gave us hope. When he was in the field, 
all of us were able to forget our problems for 90 minutes. Pelé greatness is going to echo in future generations because he's the standard of greatness. In Brazil, whenever an athlete is the best in a certain sport, we even say that this person is the Pelé of the sport. For example, Michael Jordan would be the Pelé of basketball, and Michael Phelps would be the Pelé for swimming. Yeah. Michael Jackson, I'm just kidding, yeah, he, but <laughs> he would be the Pelé for the pop, I guess. But, yeah. <laughs> I'm not Pelé of volleyball, neither I'm his goddaughter, let's be. But with my experience as a Brazilian athlete, I agree with Pelé when he say, success is not an accident. It is hard work, perseverance, learning, studying, sacrifice, and most of all, love what you're doing and learn it all you're learning to do. Obrigado. Uh, and for my American friends, my new American friends, thank you very much. Uh, and now I will introduce my Brazilian friend, Hannah Gomes. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Boa tarde a todos. Uh, okay, so he's the great, greatest athlete of the 20th century. In Brazil and worldwide, Pelé became synonymous of excellence and perfection in sports. He's a man that performed all of his achievements with passion. And he, he inspires people to, uh, to do whatever you, you're gonna do, your job, your activity with passion. So if you do uh, your job or activity with passion, uh, you do it, uh, you can, you can success in it. You can, have you, you can have success. So besides being the king of soccer, Pelé also means to be good at all of the sports and in all academic disciplines. Everyone wants to be called Pelé nowadays. It means to stand out, to be brilliant, to be genius in something. And as Sada said before, there's a Pelé in basketball, there's a Pelé in volleyball, there's, in, even in a biology class, there's a Pelé if you stand out in it. So after him, soccer became the most popular sport uh, in the whole world. And in my experience, when I traveled to other countries, even like in the other side of the world, like Asia, uh, uh, in India, I've been to India, Nepal, Tibet, and all of those countries, when I say that I'm Brazilian, it's, it's a funny fact, because I say, oh, I'm Brazilian. And the people, the kids, they start, um, they put a smile on their faces, and they start yelling, oh, Pelé, Pelé, do you know Pelé? And actually, the word Pelé, uh, for me, it is like a mantra of joy, uh, a password for happiness. It makes people smile, it, make, it makes people happy all around the world. Um, I am I'm very proud to be Brazilian. And actually, I'm from, from the same state as Pelé was born. And he's from a city called uh, Tres Corações, which is very close to my city. And we've never had this opportunity before. So I'm very glad that Hofstra is giving me this incredible, incredible opportunity to meet the king of soccer. I came from Brazil to Hofstra to open my world of possibilities. And my dream is to become Pelé in something, is to become Pelé in medicine, is to become Pelé in music or research. So after many centuries, mankind, mankind will still be listening to his name. The name Pelé today is not linked to the past, is not linked to the present or to the future. The name Pelé is bound to eternity. Uh, so now I would like just to say thank you to Dr. Pugliese, Dr. Elsie for the support. Thanks, President Rabinowitz, uh, to host this conference. Hofstra, thank you for this once in a life opportunity. And Pelé, muito obrigado. 
uh, thank you for what you did for the sports world and for inspiring us to seek perfection and to continue pressing uh, forward through hardships. He taught us all, all of that, to continue pressing uh, through hardships, through hard moments. And thank you for making us to improve and try to be better each day of our lives. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, before I introduce our Hofstra students, I'd like to take a, a moment just to uh, acknowledge a couple of people in the audience who are with us uh, this afternoon. We are extraordinarily pleased and honored to have the uh, Consul General of Italy in New York, the Honorable Natalia Quintavale here this afternoon, <laughs> representing the Italian government and their support, along with the Deputy Consul General, Dr. Uh, Dino Sorrentino. Thank you very much. Um, it has been an extraordinary two years uh, putting this conference together, and I am really honored and privileged to have this opportunity to bring someone who was my idol as a child growing up on Long Island to Hofstra, to bring him to students at Hofstra and to students on Long Island. Um, so thank you very much for this opportunity. We are extraordinarily and justifiably proud of our students at Hofstra. We would place our students at Hofstra against students from any college in America or the university uh, or, or, or the world. And to prove that, we've asked two students at Hofstra to speak to you this afternoon, both of whom excel in academics and on the soccer field. The first one is Sean Foster from Southport, England, very close to Liverpool. Sean. Hello there, uh, team. It started with something as simple as a ball. As a four-year-old in Liverpool, I discovered an instant joy in having that ball at my feet. From the ball and me, it soon became the ball, me and my friends, the beginning of a cycle that has lasted throughout my life. When I look back at almost all of my childhood memories, it involves soccer. Endless hours from my own backyard annoying my mum with the continual thud of the ball against the back of the house and all too often the sound of smashing glass as I broke yet another window. A sound that was always quickly followed by my mum's Sean! A sound that still rings in my ears each time I miss it a shot. From the backyard I moved to the local streets, then the parks and eventually to something that looked like a real soccer field. Growing up my most prized possession was a pair of Ronaldo R9 cleats, the real Ronaldo, the Brazilian one, not the Portuguese one. Have a guess, yeah. And my first ever videotape, Pele, the master and his method. Indeed, Pele, I have to say that much of the skill I have is down to countless hours of watching you juggle the grapefruit and trying to emulate your majestic slow motion bicycle kick. I never mastered it. I never mastered it. As I grew and developed, soccer provided me with opportunities of which I could have only have dreamt playing with bigger and bigger teams in front of larger and larger crowds. It allowed me to travel far from my Liverpool roots and savour the sweet taste of victory, as well as the absolute agony and dejection of defeat. Soccer, of course, led me here to Hofstra, an experience that has both changed and expanded my life forever. I'm the first member of my family to attend university, and soccer gave me that, for what I'll always be grateful. The fantastic education I've been afforded here at Hofstra will underpin my future and provide career opportunities way beyond my wildest expectations. The lessons I have learned also go far further than the boundaries of the soccer field. The opportunities that I have been afforded through soccer have taught me life lessons that pervade my every moment. The understanding that hard work is crucial to success in all aspects of one's life. The humility that is required with success and victory alongside the dignity and education that comes with defeat. The unbe unbelievable camaraderie and support from teammates who have become lifelong friends. They not only support my passes on the field, but my life's ups and downs. All of this and so much more has come from my association with the beautiful game and that round ball. Plus, and you may not believe this, but my ability to speak literally hundreds of foreign languages. Many say I can only speak Liverpoolian, but if I'm in Germany and my Liverpool drawl is met with a blank stir, that happens in America also, uh, I only have to mention Schweinsteiger or Bayern Munich and I have friends. In Brazil, with no Portuguese, just mention the word Pelé or Neymar and motion a shot on goal and invitations to carnival abound. Soccer is the world's game. It's also been my game and my life. 
And that round ball, well, now like the circle of life, that too is complete in itself, as I now work with young aspiring children and teach them the skills of the game. Those children dream, just like me and Pelé did, as youngsters. Those dreams continue the enormous impact soccer has on individuals and the world. As a kid in Liverpool, I never dreamt that one day I would speak in front of the world's greatest ever player, with a world-class education almost complete. That is the power and the impact of soccer, the world's greatest game. I would now like to introduce Leah Hinnan of the women's soccer team. Thank you. Hello, everyone. About 10 years ago, in middle school, I was standing in front of a group of people. It was almost like this, but it wasn't about 500 people and not the biggest childhood idol I've ever had was sitting here. 10 years ago, I held a presentation about the biggest soccer legend that has ever existed. Today, I feel honored to stand on stage with that legend. And I'm not talking about Sean Foster, sorry, Foss. <laughs> a lot has happened in those 10 years. Not only has soccer become pretty much the love of my life, but also has it worked as some kind of a two-way street through it. Soccer has opened my eyes to the world we live in, and it has given me an enormously strong and beautiful mean to make this very world a better place. Soccer is a beautiful game, that much simple. Let me explain. Growing up in Switzerland, I had an amazing childhood. I had a great family, I had my own room, I had books, I could go to school, and I could play soccer. It wasn't until later that I realized there are people that don't have these simple privileges that most of us here do. Soccer helped me realize that. When I went to Eastern Europe with the under-17 and under-19 women's national team, I saw places and people that were so much worse off than all of us. While we were stationed with the team in the nicest hotels, had the best food, and the trips to the practice field were taken care of, we would be driving by slums and buildings that were still bearing scars of the civil war that was going on there. Being able to travel with soccer opened my eyes to the world we live in. It's amazing how some have everything and others almost nothing. However, I believe that can be changed. And I believe that soccer can be an immensely powerful means to change that. This January, I went to Cartagena, Colombia for a month. I worked with an amazing local organization called Obra Moises, whose goal is exactly that, to improve and change underprivileged children's lives. During my stay, I organized a mini World Cup with these little kids, with practices and kick-arounds on the local um, field. And it is amazing what one little soccer ball can do. Each day, more children came and wanted to participate, their eyes sparkling with joy when you unpacked the practice balls, and they were absolutely eager to learn every move that I had, which are not that many. <laughs> children from about 6 to 15 years old suddenly wanted to spend every minute of their day on the soccer field instead of in the streets with the local gangs. They learned how to share whether it was from their shoes to play with, which a lot of them didn't even have, to the water that we drank in the breaks. They learned how to be a team and how to help each other out. But most importantly, they learned that there is more to life than seeking respect in joining street gangs. They learned that there is joy, happiness, that there is a way to escape the poverty and the daily struggle. And all it took was a soccer ball one little soccer ball and the will to make a difference in those little children's lives. I believe that soccer can change the world in so many ways. It can make it a better place, and really all it takes is a ball. Soccer truly is a beautiful game. Thank you. I would like to ask Dr. Pele to come forward. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to pronounce your real name. 
Now, I've been, this is a very formal thing when you give an honorary degree to somebody. So I have been practicing the pronunciation of Pele's full name for a week now. So, Edson Arantes do Nascimento. Good. It is my honor and my privilege to recognize your humanitarian and your philanthropic work and your incredible contributions to the sport of soccer and therefore to the human spirit. I am delighted to present you with a Doctor of Humane Letters degree honoris causa. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, first of all, you please forgive my English. It will be easy to me to say in Portuguese. <laughs> Much easier. First of all, because my emotion, and uh, second, because uh, it's a fantastic one that people recognize what you're doing, but uh, I have to thank God to give me health to be here uh, today. Thank you everyone who make this possible, who make my life possible, my family, because I, I could not do anything alone. I have a lot of people who help me to be here where I am now. And uh, another thing, I thanks God, thanks my family, is normally uh, the people they use to recognize, you know, to, to give a prize or to homenage the person after they died, after they passed away. I have a lock because I am in life here to receive the, this honor. This is a, another gift of God. And then to talk about gift of God, uh, it's difficult to explain why, you know, hap what happened in my life, why I have uh, so many, you know, recognizement, homenage, because uh, when I was young, my father was a soccer player. I just think, when I was my nine years old, ten years old, just think to play like my father. That's what I, I was crazy to play like my father. And, uh, and God gave me the opportunity to play four World Cup and Brazil won three. I become you know, well known because I was in the biggest family in the world. Football, soccer, no doubt, is the biggest family in the world. But I have something who the people don't 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 uh, don't know, and then myself, I don't understand. As you no, know, my name, my family name, is Edson Arantes do Nascimento, like the the the, the president said here. But the, the people don't know. People just recognize that no Pelé. <laughs> this is amazing because when I was young, I hate Pelé. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Pelé. Serious, serious. I I want to play like my father. My name is Edson, and then uh, my father he gave me Edson because of a Thomas Edson, the the the, the engineer of the light. I born. In, in the small town where I was born, called Three Hearts. I am a man of Three Hearts. There, that time in '40, when I was born, come the light. Then I was very proud because you know, Thomas Edson, he bring the light. I born in the same time. I was very happy, uh, very proud of that. Then the kids in the school, they call me Pele. In the school, I was the second year, 
and Glupen Then I fight with the kids because you know my name is Ed, an important name in a good school. But then I got two days suspend. <laughs> <laughs> two days suspend in the school. Then a whole you no know, school we start to call me Pele. Pele. I hate Pele. <laughs> Yet, but today, today I love because uh, the, the name who gave him the opportunity to be with uh, at least four generation follow Pele is a big responsibility. But uh, I thank God for that. I I I will stay here you no know, all night to tell a history about my friend Pele. Uh, serious. I have a lot of uh, history, but the uh, most important is I thanks God for giving this opportunity to be in life here. And always I used to remember what my father used to tell me. Listen, never think and never uh, acting like you are the best because always you have something to learn. I am here with the four generation. I think I have a lot of to learn and thank for this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So before we leave today, I'd like to just uh, sum up a few things about Pelé and the reasoning behind the honorary degree um, that we've just witnessed him receiving today. Uh, born in 1940 in Tres Corazois, Pelé traveled from Minas Gerais to Bauru to Sao Paulo as a football prodigy and had become a national icon in Brazil while still a teenager. He became the youngest player to score an international goal in 1957 at the age of 16, and of course would go on to be the game's all-time leading scorer. That he played most of his brilliant career spanning more than two decades in his home country and for the first professional club he played for, Santos, makes his importance to the Latin American region all the greater. Santos was an industrial port city in the state of Sao Paulo and had gone through many of the booms and busts that cities in the regions experienced. Pelé brought his team from the margins to dominate the center of Brazilian and continental football. After a glorious career in Brazil, U.S. soccer persuaded Pelé that he could do great things for the cause of sport here, quite literally within this two mile radius, and he donned the New York Cosmos jersey playing in front of millions of fans and acting as an ambassador of global soccer as well as Pan-Americanism. After such a career, many would have been satisfied, but Pelé continued a life of, life of service. He has served as the United Nations Ambassador for Ecology and the Environment, the Brazilian government's Special Minister for Sport, and UNESCO's Goodwill Ambassador. He has also worked with legislators and associations to tackle corruption in football. His service to the dissemination of sport has been so exceptional that the world governing body, FIFA, created a special lifetime service award given to him just a few months ago, and the International Olympic Committee named him the greatest athlete of the 20th century. Pelé and the football tradition he represents in Brazil have become closely identified with Brazilian nationalism, placing soccer as representative of broader cultural attributes. Many have tried to mobilize love for the game to promote cohesion and social integration. The way that Pelé and his generation played the game held a mirror, not up to the actual world perhaps, but the aspirations that many millions of fans held. The international conference we've had here has given us an opportunity to reflect on how football gives us insight about class inequality, social injustice, 
gender, courage, solidarity, the human condition. And Brazil, as all nations, has lived with deep divisions and contests over their soccer legacy. But it also gives us pause, I think. What would the world look like if more national identities were founded on, br on creative brilliance, grace, and engagement with the world, win or lose? I'd like to end with a very brief comment in Portuguese, my version of Portuguese, which um, I will then follow with a brief translation. Pelé surgiu em meados do século XX, uma época de ameaça nuclear e do autoritarismo na América Latina. Futebol criou um espaço ideal à esperança de que talvez um futuro pacífico e integrado era possível. A figura do jogador de futebol, futebol não pode ser constrangido pelos polos da Guerra Fria e assim trouxe alegria para os corações de muitos. And so, in English, Pelé emerged in the 20th century, an era of nuclear threat and authoritarianism in Latin America. Football created an ideal space. Hope in perhaps a peaceful and integrated future was possible. The figure of the soccer player could not be constrained by poles of the Cold War, and thus brought joy to the hearts of many. I would like to commend the President Rabinowitz for his leadership um, in, in granting this honorary degree to Edson Arantes do Nascimento Pele. Thank you. And now we will have a musical interlude by the Hofstra University String Trio, Rosemary Bonaspina on the violin, Caitlin Tropiano on the cello, and Victoria Tropiano on the viola. Please join me in thanking the Hofstra University String Trio. Please join me in congratulating Dr. Pele. And this concludes our convocation. Thank you very much for joining us.